dark and sinister aesthetic with a lot of makeup. Whitened faces. Freak. Heavy eyeliner. Sometimes a uh, questionable wardrobe choice. Particularly tight black jeans. They just stink of patchouli oil. A sad 80s dead concept. Quick, go hide in our caves or graveyards. Oh, I sit in the graveyard and slip my wrists again. <laughs> I die again. <laughs> <laughs> White face freaks, loners geeks, trousers that make you infertile. Can such things be? You may know me as Giles, but tonight, mortals, you can call me Morpheus, the darkly clad one, as I take you beyond the pale. The next 30 minutes will be spent unraveling the corpse of the scene they call Goth, as it is reborn for the new millennia. So, you are. So you think you know about goth. All around you the shops are filled with gothic fashions. And even your mother knows who Marilyn Manson is. But there's more to it all than crushed black velvet, PVC pants, and a spot of patchouli oil. Roman from current future pop heroes, VNV Nation. I think people outside of our scene have this terrible, warped view of our scene as being full of dorks and goths who sit in basements of churches with their hair sort of back and they're living off bad images of Susie and the Banshees from the early 80s, and it's absolutely nothing like that or nothing to do with that anymore. Goth may be an internationally recognized deviance today, but it all started a long, long time ago. Dave exiled DJs at Tenebrae and Malice Underground in London. It really began with punk in the late 70s. It branched out into various other sides, one of which was the more sort of pop punk stuff like the Buzzcocks and also the gothier stuff like Bauhaus and Susie. From the cradle bars comes a beckoning voice that's then spinning. You have no choice. Andy Kappa edits Bizarre magazine. Goth came out of like post point like Joy Division and Echo and the Bunnymen. But then I think the kids start to take themselves too seriously and building in like a kind of Dungeons and Dragons aesthetic into it as well, wearing like, the tight leather pants and boy hats and pretending they lived in castles drinking goblets and eating licorice ice cream. Bands like Joy Division, Susie and the Banshees and Bauhaus were the forefathers of the gothic sound. But this dark offshoot of punk had a strange appeal to the tortured souls later known as goths. DJ Pete Scathe was genetically disposed to join the set. Goth was the most attractive to me, possibly because it was seen as a good thing to be ludicrously skinny, which is something I've always suffered from. There was a kind of a shocking look when it first started because no one else was kind of looking like that. And there's a kind of look distance themselves from the punks or the battlers. The punks or the tannies would think, fucking hell, look at that guy there, he just looks like pure devil worshipper. But now, like, the Osbournes has kind of blown the lid off that whole world for everyone. You know, everyone sort of knows that they're not a danger anymore. So why does one choose to walk the path of fallen souls? Is it nature or nurture? Are they born to drink from the bloodied goblet? Norwegian creature of darkness, Mortis. It's kind of my defense system, you could almost say, because it keeps me away from turning into a trendy person. I don't know if I had that in me to become one, and I don't want to find out. Lee Chaos runs Wasp Factory Records. The whole goth thing for me is sort of a state of mind, an admittance that you're not the same as the people who work in Barclays Bank, and you'll never really subscribe to the idea that you're going to do a day job and come home and watch Big Brother or whatever. Mike is the lead singer in Manuscript. One of the UK's top goth bands. It was like the music I liked, and then even a bit more after that. And then all the people I liked, and a bit more after that, and the sort of clubs and situations that I liked. I started having an interest in the goth and alternative scene around the same time that I realised that Guns N' Roses were the worst band on the planet. Why don't I try to like kids back on the back? The world of goth may seem a closed door to many, but creaking doors will swing open for the uninitiated. Not so long ago, a young lad named Twinkle, who now fronts the ghost of Lamora, 
was just a mere indie kid. I was living in a small town called Whitney. I was kind of aware of The Cure and Susie and the well-known kind of bands, but never dressed like one. I was more of an indie kid with my airwalk trainers and blue jeans. Don't wear jeans anymore. It's bad. It's bad. Jeans bad. Moved to London. First girlfriend was a goth and through her just invaded a record collection, invaded a wardrobe, wore her heels, wore her skirts, wore her tights, used her makeup, developed my own image. Mike and Tim from Manuscript. Lots of people get into goth from different routes. One is the metal route, so you, you like your Metallica and then you find yourself, you know, moving towards sort of Cradle of Filth and then maybe Marilyn Manson and you'll find maybe the righteous path to Fields of the Nephilim. That's exactly what happened to me. I was a rock chick when I was little mm -hmm. and went through every phase of rock chickdom under the sun, starting off with glam, I guess, and then moving into heavier and heavier things until I was into death and doom metal and turning around and looking for something just that little bit nastier, would you believe, <laughs> I found golf because it's often slightly more considered and can be just really, really scary. But Tim, you had to get out of death metal because they don't have keyboard players, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Every band I attempted to be in ended up sounding like a really heavy version of Marillion. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, perhaps it is the goths who have been saved. But why then do you mock and spurn? Let the floodgates of prejudice be open-head. What's the difference between a goth and a corpse? A goth's blood's still slightly warm. Most goths are fairly morbid, into death, necromancy, necrophilia, dark magic. Necrophilia! Goths are like well known for cutting themselves and taking drugs. And like drink each other's blood and stuff. Well now do you get a goth out of a tree? Cut rope. Bizarre magazine's Andy Kappa. Well, if a goth walked down, like, a rough area of any housing estate, they'd be lucky to get from one end of it to the other, I think. Lecturer in goth studies at the University of Transylvania. Oh. Okay, then. He covers social sciences at Northampton, but has written a book about the scene. Mr. Paul Hodginson has suffered for his art for many, many years. There certainly was quite a lot of hassle that we got off people. You got ready with your friends, and then you had to negotiate the bus and walking through town, and then you got to the safe space, which was the goth club. It's more in men than women. They're the ones that normally give you most of the hassle. Freak is a common one. Half queer. Slut. Halloween's over. Morticia. I've had eggs thrown at me. DJ Dave Exar. Some people think that goths all take drugs in huge amount. Some people think we're all depressed all the time. We're all sexual deviants. You know, sick or twisted. It reaches the point where you don't even notice any. You just got to laugh it off, really. Well, I just say all right, normal. Goths tend to see it from the other side of the coin. We tend to see that, you know, these people, a lot of them are slaves to fashion and mark. We're the ones who think for ourselves and, and are the way we want to be. Mortis has been on the Gothic fringe for over a decade. First in the legendary black metal band Emperor, and currently as a solo artist. His prosthetic troll-like mask and mummified bondage look has meant that he's always had a problem blending into the crowd. And I'm sure a lot of kids can relate to this. Students are different if you live in a small society. They just rat up against you and go like, oh yeah, you're a freak, you kill animals, you know, because you're black, you're a Satanist. There's stuff like, uh, that I killed my mom, which is like obviously total bullshit. That was an evil rumor that got started in my own hometown in the mid-90s when people decided they didn't like us because we look different. So that's, that's total crap, that's bullshit, total bullshit, I wanna point that out. I'm just a nice guy doing my thing. You can cut that out. Andy Kappa. Is that then involved Schlager music, like Bavarian, big 1936 Nazi music, with big like Wagnerian strings and a big fat girl singing, oh, and most of us just banging these drums, like covered in blood, and it was quite good. And he had some girl in like a cross at the front of the stage, chained up. At the end of the gig, he came up with like a sacrificial dagger, disemboweled this girl. So he like meet into the crowd, it was hilarious. If some guy or a girl, whatever, that isn't a fan, would step into that venue and looking at it, looking at me, looking at my band, that's probably not that same to that. Jumping around on stage looking like a freaking baboon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with a... Yeah, I look like a freaking baboon with a limp. Not by my album, you freak. Artists may sprawl in pits of slime or sing of violent nightmares, 
But staged gore does not maketh the murderer, and an unhealthy interest in vampires does not encourage a taste for blood. So saith goth prof Paul Hutkinson. The U.S. press with associated goth vampirism, as in real vampirism and, and people actually trying to drink each other's blood. We get tons of letters off kids who are into blood play. They put rubber sheets on their bed to get razor blades out, carve each other up, drink each other's blood, brand each other. Every now and again, something happens. Like, for example, recently there was a guy in Wales who uh, killed some old lady and drank her blood or something horrible like that. You just kind of thought, oh, it's only going to be a second until someone mentions the goth word and then I'll get a phone call from the sun or something wanting me to comment on goth subculture and whether it leads to people murdering people and drinking their blood. There's loads of kids who do it. Why, why do they send me pictures of themselves doing it to our magazine? Like hundreds of them a month. We're putting one on the front cover next week, a girl drinking boyfriend's blood. She's 22, works in the porn store. They her and her boyfriend just like have sex, but they, they cut each other up first, drink like, each other's blood and then have sex. Goth culture has not led to that kind of thing. In my experience, goths are some of the wimpiest people I've ever met, really, and I include myself in that, totally. Bullshit. They're saying this scene doesn't exist, but it does exist all over the place, just not in their scene, because they kind of just do it for the fashion aspect. There are kids who are purely, purely into it, drinking blood and stuff. Bang each other. It happens all the time. Tim from Manuscript. The goth scene is, is, is just generally so very, very friendly. And I, I can't think I've ever seen a brawl in a, in a goth pub or anything like that, ever. The risk of nail breakage is far too high. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the mainstream does not understand the subculture. They confuse it with Satanism, vampires and bloodlust. To truly understand, you must first accept the three rules of goth. The first, and hardest to acquire, is a gothic personality. Dave Bolton runs the popular web forum SlashGoth.org, visited by 20,000 tortured souls each month. Most goths have the experience of being an outsider, a misfit. Most goths would have an appreciation for the darker side of life. Goths tend to be intelligent, more intelligent than your average subculture. It's a kind of Baroque thing. It's about extremity and intensity and excess that can encompass film, old bands, new bands, whatever. It's about the quality rather than the name given to it. To be a goth proper, you have to be very, very sensitive when you go to your first club when you're 16. You hide away and hopefully find a person that's older than you to latch on to and teach you these mysterious ways. And you get to know these bands and you get to know these pubs and you get to know these people and all of a sudden before you know it you're trapped and in it forever you come home one day to realize that you've painted your walls red in your sleep and you yeah. happen to have a coffin as your coffee table and suddenly realize that it's crept into interior design of your life i'm a goth and proud of it although most goths aren't supposed to call themselves goths they always say that the way that you can tell a true goth is the first person who denies that they are. Goths are sort of desperate to say, no, I'm not a goth, I'm an individual. I'm not a goth, I'm an individual. But actually, we've all got the same boots on, haven't we? This is Morpheus, the darkly clad one, going beyond the pale on Lamarck Live for Radio 1. The second and perhaps most prominent aspect of gothnicity is, of course, the dress sense. May I introduce you to Mark? A trad goth prepares himself for a night out on the town. I'm guessing really they go to a goth club in Portsmouth called Resurgence. Probably I think PVC's got to be done really, hasn't it? Standard old PVC with buckles on the side. Sort of, ah, that's the purple velvety thing that I sort of modified myself. And I thought, just to make it a bit different, I'd slice the buttons off, slice it about a bit, and basically hold it together with safety pins. Shoes, let's have a... We're going to have to go for standard new rocks somehow. This particular model is very like a uh, biker's boot, really. About two feet tall. I don't know, four inch heel on the bottom of it, something like that. I think I'll probably finish off with a trench coat over that. There might be a faint sizzling sound here because I'm sort of frying my hair with crimpers at the moment. You've got enough hairspray on your hair with crimpers. It oh, sets the crimping quite nicely. And also sort of makes your hair go vaguely plasticky so you can stick it up and it stays up. Ow! But why do you have to dress so strange, Mortise? Because I like it, really. And I, I guess I could answer that with a question to the people that ask me, why do, why do you not do it? You know? Because I don't want it. That's probably the answer, right? Because I look like a freak. 
And I feel like I look like a freak. I look like Warren's. Why do you go to see The Lord of the Rings? Or uh, Sleepy Hollow? Because I like to watch it. So what's wrong with me then? You know? I like doing what I'm doing. And uh, that's it. Fuck off. If, if you don't like it, you don't have to fucking watch me. Turn your back and walk. Away. Don't ever come back. The third and most diverse feature of goth is the music. Ah, listen to them. The children of the night. What sweet music they make. But what an assorted mix of music there is. From synth pop to dark wave, goth has progressed a long way since the Sisters of Mercy. Paul Hodkinson. Towards the end of the 1990s, there emerges this new kind of category called EBM, involving a dancey version of the goth style. And that became really cool, and there was a fashion associated with it. The fashion was luminous. For these cyber goths, orange was the new black. Ronan from VNV Nation. The cyber bit, I love this, right? You have this hybrid, which sort of started in the early 90s, of like Italians coming over who were mental about manga and anime, like Jap Japanese cartoons, and totally mental about what they called goth, which was everything sort of like dark and electronic from the late 80s and early 90s, and mixing the two together. Then getting into techno, and then getting into madly into happy hardcore. Now you have the scene where people are listening to emotionally gothy music, and then listening to mad full-on banging techno, dressing up in like anything luminous, anything mad goggles, goggles prerequisite. Just recently, however, there's been a sense that perhaps that might have had its day to some extent and that people are getting more into guitar-based music, possibly in some way linked with the growth of new metal. But the residue of electronic music still lingers in the goth undergrowth. My name is Lee Chaos. I run Wasp Factory Recordings, which is an independent label, and I sing in one of the bands that are on the label called The Chaos Engine. There's quite a lot of edginess with the acts that we've got on the label. They're all quite experimental. We sort of group them all in, in the electronic area. And goth music that we're focusing on is more of bands that have come through, such as Covenant and Pop Team and Berserk and Icon of Coil. It's bands that sort of take the more sort of dancey elements, but meld that with darker lyrics and darker imagery. Let's go party. Well, Bobby, we've only just started. Oh, I love you. Yeah, you're right. That was Chaos Engine's version of Aqua's Barbie Girl. And if it didn't make your blood run cold, nothing will. Caroline from Ethereal Goth Band, Seventh Harmonic. I think it's very hard to define goth music. It's a microcosm of every style of music. The pop stuff, the electronic, dance, metal, bands from the goth genre span all these genres and a lot more. Yeah, I'm Dave. I run One Goth Night and DJ a few other ones. Probably the big names in the goth scene in the UK at the moment would be Dream Disciples and Incubus Succubus, Passion Play, Manuscript. My name is Mike. I'm the vocalist in Manuscript. Well, I'm Tim and I'm the keyboard player and a bit of a vocalist in Manuscript. We don't have to sing about doom and gloom to be in a goth band. Some of it can be very uplifting and some of it can be really quite fluffy and nice. Manuscript songs are about, well, just what any other band songs are about, but we just play with the words, make them a bit less obvious. We like our rhyming couplets. Every now and again we have a, a, a stab at goth pastiche, because it's, it's good to do that. In fact, yeah. we did a song called Plastic Fangs, which was basically having a bit of a laugh. We've got a sense of humour, I suppose, which almost expels us from... <laughs> yes, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the first verse opens, Number 17, for a porcelain complexion to create the right impression for this adolescent dream. Number 17, for a porcelain complexion to create the right impression in this adolescent dream. There's a few up-and-coming bands. Yeah! Ghost of Lamora seem to be taking certain parts of London by storm, certainly. My name is Twinkle, and I'm the lead singer for the Ghost of Lamora. Ghost of Lamora is a band. It's consisting of four people and a drum machine. It's goth. Goth pop rock. Pass through lonely streets. Rendezvous to keep. Dark 
rock our last melancholic bliss. A lot of feeling that these bands have spent too much time listening to the old favourites like the Sisters and the Mission and, and find it difficult to make music that doesn't sound very similar to that. But then there's bands like Womb and Leisure Hive that are more on the sort of art school side of things and making something that, while it's still to me is very much goth, doesn't have the standard sort of Sisters bass line. All right, there are bands who have huge influence on the 80s like Star Industry or Mary Thoughts, even us. There are loads of bands uh, moving things on. VNV Nation, Killer Miranda, Narcissus Paul. And you've got bands like Seventh Harmonic, and people say they're goth. Seventh Harmonic, a kind of ethereal, atmospheric band. Uh, we're all, all female bands. We've got lots of different influences. Eastern, tribal, Celtic, trip-hop. It fits in with the more um, romantic side of goth. One of the most successful British goth bands is VNV Nation, who have scored top 30 hits in Germany, getting mobbed in supermarkets. Ronan is the lead singer. The best way to describe it is energetic electronic music, heavily influenced by contemporary electronics. But lyrically and musically, it has a very emotive content. It's sub pop in a way, it's not really commercial. I asked myself, was I content with the world that I once cherished? VNV Nation is so successful on the other side of the channel, they've relocated to Germany. The move was made easier because the music industry in this country doesn't understand goth bands. Major labels have a habit of sniffing around the top groups, signing and then dropping them when the breakthrough crossover hit doesn't emerge. Greg's band, Paradise Lost, we're at one stage signed to EMI. We reached a peak in our sales on Music for Nations. We sold a lot of a record called Draconian Times. And then we did a record called One Second, which repeated that. And then the, the majors started sniffing around, because obviously there's all these sales. And we just took the bait, really. And in hindsight, maybe it was or wasn't a good idea, I don't know. Because majors are not generally that good at marketing stuff like us, because obviously they wanted to be commercial act, whatever that means, it was destined not to work really. You know? Major labels do have a tendency to dictate to bands what they want them to do and what they want them to be and that's not something we could, in our infrastructure, we could work with successfully. The main ambition of the band is to reach as many people as possible but I don't want to do that in any essence of compromising what is the sentiment that's brought us to where we are like the ability for us to decide our own production, to decide our own image, the things that we understand, that our fans understand that somebody in a, a product manager for a major label isn't necessarily going to get so that's the goth personality, the fashion, and the music. Now, where best to proudly display one's dark side than in some basement grotto, making snake bite and black amongst fellow merchants of bloom. All across the country, goth clubs pack out their seedy venues from the Wendy House in Leeds to resurgence in Portsmouth. Only do make sure you dress up for the occasion. Pete Scaith. If you want to come to a goth club, black is always a good start. Generally speaking, if you're wearing black from head to toe, you're going to blend in. About the only thing in black that wouldn't work would probably be a black shell suit. One of the longest running and internationally famous goth nights is London Slime Night. Twinkle. The Slime Light is a club just behind Angel Tube Station in Islington. I suppose you could say it's the goth club of London. Every Saturday night from about half ten till seven, I think it is now. conversations like in the toilet or slime light everyone's always hanging out in the bathrooms yeah it's because i can hear it so it's kind of fun you have to be able to dance to goth music that is really important it's all about poncing around and being dramatic gothic clubs may remain underground but there is no doubt that the movement's dark imagery has broken into the mainstream every town in the uk has its own version of the Leeds Corn Exchange, where, on a Saturday, spooky boys and girls hang around outside, wearing eyeliner and pierced up to and including the us. Lecturer Atkinson. Goth has become bigger in the media because 
of Marilyn Manson <laughs> and other bands, Cradle of Filth as another example, new metal and what preceded it, extreme metal, which went in a darker direction, meant that goth bands and goth-ish rock bands got a lot of attention. And to that list you can add Slipknot, My Ruin, and Type O Negative, metal bands who have adopted the gothic image and brought it into the new metal mainstream. Andy Kappa. The Murder Dolls is an example of a new band who have influenced kind of by bands like the Misfits. They've taken like the romance out of goth and just made it purely hardcore and a violent kind of death obsessed goth. Hey, listen up, Radio Land. This is Joey from the Murder Dolls slash Slipknot, and you're listening to Beyond the Pale on Radio One. We look that way, but I'm more of like a black metal fan. <laughs> You know, Manson, I think, definitely is the one that, you know, really brought it to the forefront as far as, like, people really accepting it and, like, is make it a little bit more cultivated, a little bit more, uh, you know, worldwide. They're obsessed with murder and killing and kind of, like, this fake glamour and slitting their wrists and overdosing and torturing spiders and uh, horror and death and murder rather than just, like, oh, yonder lies a castle whereupon my lover lies next to sleep with a dragon and a fucking goblet in her hand. It's a total laugh. I mean, I said this over and over. In the Murder Dolls, all our stuff is like dark humor. It's not supposed to be seriously. It's just fun, you know. It creates a good atmosphere live, man, because the songs are so anthematic. It's like the Ramones thing. It's upbeat, fun, cool atmosphere live. And sometimes they'll like catch themselves like, what am I singing to? But it's cool. You'll see them like with smiles on their faces. Well, I'd rather cut you than the wedding cake in your bloody guts of my red tops. And I do, I do, I do want to kill you. Till death do us part, but I'll survive. Pete Scale. If you listen to playing, it's a lot more strident, noisy, and aggressive than most of the goth bands whose attempt to be turned inward into a more introspective nature rather than the please go away world I'm going to call you tend to get with a lot of new metal bands. All Hallows' Eve was just last week, which can mean only one thing. It must be time for the Gothic Covenant of Souls. Over the weekend, hundreds of Goths converged on a small seaside town in North Yorkshire. Mike and Tim from Manuscript and Lee Chaos of Wasp Factory Records can always be found propping up the bad case. Twice a year, in April and in November, up in Whitby, North Yorkshire, there is the Whitby Gothic Weekend, which is the biggest Gothic gathering in the UK. 2,000 Goths descend upon Whitby, and they love it. A lot of our bands have played there, Dust have played there, Arkham Asylum have played there, and Mudan the Chaos Engine have played. It's sort of like the Goth Glastonbury. Goths don't do fields, it's just like a big venue. It's very difficult to find bona fide goth music if you don't know where to look, and it will be there, Whitby, for you. And people spend hundreds of pounds to buy clothes, to buy fashion, accessories, jewellery, fanzines like Meltdown, you name it, it's there. The goth scene is very much spread about all over the country, the pockets of it often in the most unlikely of places, but goths travel very well. <laughs> and as a result of that, um, it's very nice to have festivals where people who may not live in London or Manchester, may live out in the Shire somewhere, can actually get together with like-minded people and just sit and chat. The hordes have departed Whitby, but they're back in their belfries, and yes, the midnight hour is approaching. But what of the future? Is it true that goth never dies? Is it really the movement of the undead? Goth will stay exactly where it is. It's one of the few underground scenes this country's really got left. I mean, everyone can spot a goth. But there's places that goths go to that not everyone knows about. It'll take one huge band to drag goth out with it into the mainstream. Kind of me hopes that doesn't happen. She goths never die, I don't think. Even if they go straight and work for an estate agent, they'll have a look, something on the mantelpiece which will like be a concession to their goth days. Maybe the rest of the house is done at Ikea, but upstairs in the bathroom there'll be a purple candle. It's true. Once you get hitched into the scene, you never lose the passion for it. It's written in British law. There has to be three goths in every town, and they all congregate at the War Memorial, drinking cider, 
And actually, check out the War Memorial wherever you are now and see if there might be a goth sitting there.